Okay, today we start the next section. Now this next section is very short. We're only going to learn three topics. The binomial theorem, solving inequalities, and working with absolute value. And these are all things you learned last year. So it should be reviewed. But we'll see. This period three is like, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let me ask you this. What is a plus b to the zero power? One. Oh, these are on it today. a plus b to the one. A plus b. A plus b to the second. A squared plus b to the a plus b to the third. Just mumble and you sound smart. <laughs> what about to the fourth? A to the fourth plus four. What? Plus six. Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> and how, did, how are you getting these numbers? Pascal's triangle. Oh, period three is a, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's Pascal's triangle. So like one, 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 one. You get ones on the outside. To get the numbers in the middle, you add the two numbers above it, right? So you get one, three, three, one. You put ones on the outside, and then what? One plus three is four. Three plus three is six. Three plus one is four. And these numbers correspond to the coefficients when you expand a plus b to a power. Right? Didn't we talk about this? It's like period three, never saw it before. So if you want to expand a plus b to the fifth, what you do is you go down to the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. Yeah, but Mr. Park, this is the fifth row. No, that's because the first row is actually the zeroth row. Remember I told you that? Because it corresponds to a plus b to the zero. So this is actually the zeroth row, the first, second, third, fourth. So you go down to the fifth row, which is this. So add up the two numbers above it. These will be the coefficients. So when you expand a plus b to the fifth, you're gonna have one a to the fifth plus, you just look at those numbers, five a to the fourth b. And then look at the pattern of the powers. The, po the powers of a go down by one, the powers of b go up by one, and the two powers always add up to this power here. Somebody said Mr. Taki used to talk to you guys that last year. That's what somebody said in period three. It doesn't matter because I'm teaching you like, like you don't know anything anyway, right? So, the 10 plus plus 5 plus 1. And there you go. That's how you expand. Okay, that's easy enough. Okay, now let's pick it up a notch. A plus B to the, give me a kind of big power. 100. You guys are class of 2015, 14? 15. 15. Okay, expect that number on the test then. Okay, if I were to expand A plus B to the 100 power, how many terms would there be? There's a pattern here, people. A plus B to the one got two terms. A plus B to the second got three terms. You see a pattern. There's going to be 101 terms. Am I going to make you write out all 101? No. No. I'll ask you, like, write out the first four terms. Like on tonight's homework. Write the first four. Okay, so you can kind of see a pattern. Well, what's the first term going to be? A to the 100 plus... 100 a to the 99b plus something a to the 98b squared, right? Because the powers of a go down by 1, the powers of b are going up by 1, and the two powers always add up to 100. Something a to the 97b cubed, right? But Mr. Park, how do I figure out those numbers? Well, should I go right all the way down to the hundredth row of Pascal's triangle? Yeah, you can if you want to, but that's crazy. Luckily, we noticed something, 
Okay, these numbers in Pascal's triangle, these are the... <laughs> I thought you guys were nodding, like you knew something. Pan, you were nodding. No, you're actually shaking your head. <laughs> the, these are the choose numbers, the combination numbers. What? what? <laughs> Okay, before we even start, do you guys know the difference between a permutation and a combination? You learned this last year. A permutation is when the order is important. A combination is when the order is not important. Oh my goodness, let's go back to the very beginning then. Okay, suppose we have eight people. Alfredo, Bernardo, Carlos, Diego, Eduardo, Fuego, Guapo, Hidalgo. <laughs> okay, I got eight people. How many ways can I select three of them and arrange them in a row of three seats like this? Here's three seats. How many ways can I pick three of them and arrange them in a row of three seats? No, no, no formula. Yeah, first of all, is this a permutation or a combination? Is the order important or is it not important? It's important. In fact, if I use the word arrange, that means the order is important. In fact, that's the definition of a permutation. It's an arrangement of objects. So if I ask you how many word ways they can be arranged, it's a permutation. So then you make the slots like this, and we're going to use the multiplication principle. How many choices do I have for this first chair? I can pick any one of these eight people. Once this person sits down, how many choices do I have? And once that person sits down, and then multiply it together? 56 choices. Is that right? That sounds right, 336. That's a permutation. However, what if I said, how many ways can I just select three people from this group of eight people to form a committee? Now, when you form a committee, does it matter who's on the committee first, second, or third? No, so that would be called a combination. And the answer would be E, C, three. You guys learned it that way last year, right? It doesn't matter, I'm teaching you like you don't know anything, right? Or, I'd rather write it like this, A choose three. They both mean the same thing, it's combination. Or maybe your book last year, did your book do this? Uh, C, eight comma three? Does that look familiar? These, they all mean the same thing, it's the combination. The combination of eight things taken three at a time, or you simply see, say, A choose three. Now, how do you compute these numbers? Well, NCR, which is also the same thing as N choose R, is equal to N factorial over R factorial, N minus R factorial. <laughs> so if you want to compute 8 choose 3, this is what you would do. You use this formula. 8 factorial over 3 factorial, and then 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial. And do you guys know what factorial is, I hope? Mm -hmm. 8 factorial means 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial, 5 more 3, 2, 1. And then if you multiply all these out, you, can you see that you do a lot of canceling? Can you see right here? And then 3 times 2 cancels the 6, what's left? 56. So. If you were to select three people and arrange them in a row, there's 336 ways of doing it. But if you're just selecting three people to be on a committee, there's only 56 ways of doing it. That's the difference between a permutation and a combination. Okay, but before we move on, okay, we, we got to know how to compute this quickly, okay? Now, you, now, if you're allowed a calculator, you know this is on your calculator, right? Well, to use your calculator, what you do is you punch in 8, and then you look for this button, NCR. It's usually going to, in TI people, it's in your probability menu. Casio people hunt for it somewhere. Anyway, if you don't know where it is, just go to the catalog, because the catalog is an alphabetical listing of everything you have on your calculator. And then you punch in 3, and then you, even scientific calculator. Like you guys taking chemistry, you guys have scientific calculator, then just look for that button. Press the 8, this button 3, boom, 56 should pop up. What is it called? NCR. No, just exactly that. Anyway, you're not going to get to use a calculator. You've got to be able to compute. Okay, so 
And of course, do I, do I have to explain that zero factorial is equal to one by definition? Because some people think zero factorial is zero, but it's not, it's one. Okay, so what if I ask you to compute this? Nine choose, nine choose seven. How do you compute that? Well, the first thing I would do is change that to nine choose two. What? Why is nine choose seven equal to nine choose two? Why is it when these two bottom numbers add up to the top number, it's the same? Because you're the same distance from the Well, look at the formula. Just look at the formula. If you use this formula on this, you can get nine factorial over seven factorial, two factorial, right? If you use it on this, you can get nine factorial over two factorial, seven factorial. Why are they equal? Duh, that, no, it's duh, that's why. <laughs> So, why did I change it to 9 to choose 2? Because it's better to have the smaller number on the bottom. Because, because look, when you go 8 choose 3, notice that from here, they all cancel out, right? So if you know all that stuff is going to cancel out, you don't even write it. So what's the pattern then? You take this number on the bottom, that's the 3, 2, 1 here, and if you have three numbers on the bottom, you just make sure there's three numbers on the top. That's the shortcut. That's because all the other stuff cancels out. So, if you're going to compute 9 choose 2, you put 2 times 1 on the bottom, and then 9 times 8 on the top. And that would be the same thing as doing this. You look at the 7. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the bottom, and then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 on the top. Can you see that this is the same? Because look, 6, 5, 4, 3. 6, oh, 6 5, 4, 3, and the 7 on top of that. So you end up with just 9 times 8 over 2 times 1. That's why it's better to have the smaller number on the bottom. And then now, you just let the canceling begin. 2 goes to 8, 4 times 36. You got the hang of it? OK, let's tr just try one more. How would you compute 11 choose 8? What would you do first? Change it to 11 choose 3. And then you just go 3, 2, 1 on the bottom and 11, 10, 9 on the top, and let the canceling begin. Dunga, dunga, 3, dunga, dunga, 5, 165. <coughs> okay, so what does this have to do with this, Mr. Park? The numbers in Pascal's triangle are the choose numbers. In the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, these numbers are simply 5 choose 0, 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2, 5 choose 3, 5 choose 4, I choose five. That's where these numbers came from. And now you can see why, oh look, these two are equal, these two are equal, this, these two are equal because Pascal's triangle is symmetric, right? Doesn't it all make sense? Oh my goodness. Okay, and you can see, anytime you have gorilla choose zero, that's it's always gonna be one. But gorilla choose one is going to be gorilla, yeah? Now I get it when you say gorilla. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to this problem. So we are not going to go down to the hundredth row of Pascal triangle. We're not. We're not. So what are the numbers going to be here? Hundred choose zero, which is one. Hundred choose one, which is a hundred. This number here is going to be a hundred choose two. Do we know how to compute that? Yes, 2 times 1 on the bottom, and then 100 times 99 on the top. 2 goes into that 50 times. So all you have to do is multiply 5 times 99, and they put a 0 at the end. How would you multiply 5 times 99? 50 times 100 minus 1. Yeah, change 99 to 100 minus 1, because look, 500 minus 5. It's called the distributive property. Can we do 500 minus 5? Does it sound like it? 495, but then you gotta times it by 10, so that's why you get the zero there. Can I use my calculator? No, you can't. Okay, the next one, did I erase something here? It's plus something, a to the 97, b to the third. Now, what number is gonna go here? 100 choose three. 100 choose three, how do you compute that then? Three, two, one on the bottom. 100, 99, 98 on the top, 3 goes into that, 33 times, 2 goes into that, 
49 times. So pretty much, you just got to multiply 49 times 33 and then add two zeros at the end, right? So here, put the two zeros in. Can you multiply 49 times 33? Just go here. 49 times 33 is 7 carry 2, 147, but it's just going to be repeated. So 7, 1, 6, 1 there. 1, 6, 1, 7, 0, oh, oh. Come on. This is simple. This is the binomial theorem. If the power is a whole number, though. If the power is a whole number. Okay, now let me give you another problem you're going to get on tonight's homework. What if I said a plus b to the, I don't know, 20th power, whatever. How many terms would there be? 21. Okay, I don't want all 21. Just find me the 18th term. What is the 18th term? Okay, well, you know the answer is going to be 20 choose something, a to the something, b to the something, right? And the two powers got to add up to 20. Yeah, but how do I know which one it is? Well, there's a pattern. Okay, look, look, here's the fifth row. Here's the first term, which is 5 choose 0, right? Here's the second term, which is 5 choose 1. Here's the third term, which is 5 choose 2. Here's the fourth term, which is 5 choose 3. So what would the 18th term be? 20 choose? 18, 20 choose 2. Okay, let's go over the pattern again. This is 5 choose 0. Maybe if I write it out, you can see it. 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2. I thought we had the pattern, but it's 3. Here's the first term. Look, I'm even pointing at the number to look at. <laughs> Too late. Here's the second term. Here's the third term. Here's the fourth term. So the 18th term would be 20 choose 17. You guys saw that pattern? And do you notice also that this number on the bottom, hey, that's the same as the power of B, though. B to the 0 is 1, right? So if this is 17, that means the power of B got to be 17. And the two powers got to add up to 20. So it's a 3. There you go. That's the 18th term. And then, of course, you simplify it, though, right? 20 choose 17 is the same thing as 20 choose 3. So you go 3, 2, 1 on the bottom, 20, 19, 18 on the top. 3 times 2 is 6 goes into that. 3 times, so basically you got 57 times 20. 57 times 2 is 114, but you got to add a 0, and then a to the 3, b to the 7, finish. Easy, huh? Now, somebody said in period three, like, Mr. Takahisu taught you guys a formula for this. Like, you just memorized it on a quiz or something. It doesn't matter, because I'm teaching you like you don't know anything, right? I would suggest don't even, there is a formula. If you look at most books, they give you a formula. But look, just follow the pattern. If you want to find the nth, the rth term, then this number here is going to be one smaller, right? Whatever number you put here, put that on the power of B, and the two powers are going to add up to that. Okay, so this is the review from last year. You should know how to expand A plus B to a whole number power. Okay, but sometimes the power is not a whole number. <laughs> so, how would you expand this? A plus B to the one-third power. First of all, let me ask you, how many terms are there going to be? One and one-third. <laughs> it's going to be one and one-third terms. No! Well, how do, you, how do you use the binomial theorem when the power is not a whole number, when it's like a fraction or a negative number? What do you do? Well, if you look at the notes, it tells you what to do. You use the general binomial theorem, which is this. A plus B to the N is equal to A to the N plus N. A to the N minus 1 B plus N. N minus 1 over 2 factorial. A to the N minus 2 B squared. It's pretty much the same pattern as the other one. Look, the powers of A are going down by 1. The powers of B are going up by 1. The two powers always add up to that. It's just the numbers in the front. But if you think about it, 
It's very similar to the choose numbers if you make that connection. So following the pattern, what's the next one going to be? n times n minus 2. So you have three things over 3 factorial, 3, 2, 1. That's just like something choose 3, right? You put the 3, 2, 1 in the bottom, and then you have three things on the top. What are, you, what are you talking about? The power of A goes down by 1. The power of B goes up by 1. And you just keep on going. So let me ask you this. If you were to expand A plus B to the 1 third, how many terms would there be? It is not 1 and a third. It is, it rhymes with min, min infinity. There's an infinite number of terms. It goes on forever. What? Okay, let's see if we can do this. The period three struggle to do this. If you want to expand a plus b to the one third, see, one third is the n. You, every time you see n, you plug in one third. Okay, so what's the first term? A to the one third. Period three said, huh? <laughs> How do you get that? You plug in one third wherever you see n plus. One third, a to the, oh gosh, <laughs> negative <laughs> two thirds, b. The power of a goes down by one. You, all you have to be able to do is subtract one. <laughs> no, but it's a fraction. <laughs> Plus, one third times negative two thirds over two factorial. See, when you get two things, two factorial. The power of a goes down by one. Negative 5 thirds, the power of b goes up by 1. And, and see, make the power, make it go down by 1 every time. Over 3 factorial, you got 3 things, put it over 3 factorial. The power of a goes down by 1. Negative 8 thirds, the power of b goes up by 1. And, and can you see that there's no end? Yeah, it goes on forever. And then of course you've got to simplify it on tonight's homework. I'll do the first two. A to the one third plus one third a to the negative two thirds b. Okay, the next one's going to be minus. Who got it? Who's got it? Ichimor. One over nine. Okay, one nine. Okay. Well, I'm assuming we can copy the rest here. Plus, okay, who's got the next one? Or Divide by a fraction that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. Wait, what? I can just do it. Okay. Um. Wait, what? This is not what your teachers taught you in elementary school. When you divide by a fraction, <coughs> like multi so this is like multiplying by one sixth. Wait, I was, I was looking at something else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, look at the correct one then. Look at this. Simplify. Okay, well, I'll write the other stuff while you figure out what the number is. Okay, 3 factorial is 3, 2, 1. The 2's cancel out. can't do this. 5 over... Rhymes with matey one. Matey one. Also, that's all I have to do on a test is make fractions and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what happened on problem four. Fractions all hell broke loose. And there you go. Those are the first four. You're going to do this on the next. You're gonna, okay, we're going to have a quiz on Tuesday. You're going to do this, except I'm going to change that power. So tonight's homework, you have one half. I showed you one third as an example. What do you think you can get? One four, but now since I told you that, I'll give you one fifth. But now I'm going to give you one sixth. Now I'll give you four sevenths. <laughs> what difference does it make? Just plug in. 
Look, the binomial theorem. The powers of A go down by one, go down by one, go down by one. The powers of B go up by one. That's the binomial theorem. <laughs> and you know what we use this for? Watch this. You're going to get this too. Uh, give me an estimate for the cube root of 2. <laughs> like what numbers can I, what nice numbers can I plug in for A and B so that I can get the cube root of 2? What? One and one. Yeah, 1 and 1, right? Is it 1 plus 1, 2? And when you raise it to the 1 third power, isn't that the same thing as cube root? So if you want to estimate, or well, if you want to compute the cube root of 2, you simply plug in 1 for A and 1 for B. So wherever you see A and B now, just plug in 1. Period 3 had struggled with this, you know, believe it or not. Plug in 1. Oh, you got it. Okay. And then plug in 1 for A and 1 for B. 1 third. 1 to any power is 1, people. If you plug in 1 here and 1 there, that's 1. Okay, plug in 1 for A and 1 for B. What do you get? Oh, you're on it now. And then plus 5 over 81. And then if you go on forever, you will get exactly the cube root of 2. But it's very difficult to go on forever. So that's why, you just add, like if you add up four terms, that would be an estimate of the cube root of 2. And you want a better estimate? Then just add five terms. You want a better estimate? Then add six terms. The more terms you add up, the closer you get to the cube root of 2. <laughs> You're going to do that on your homework as well. No, then you gotta make, you got to add these fractions up. It's called least common denominator. Yeah, come on. The least common denominator is 81. So then you go 81 plus 27 minus 9 plus 5. So what is that? Well, this is 80 plus 5 is 23, so that's 104 over 81. Why is that difficult? That's the hard part. <laughs> Fractions, all hell breaks loose. Four goes, the ones cancel out. Four goes into eight two times, so you get zero over two is zero. <laughs> Okay, so we're one-third done then. We only got two more lessons this chapter.